guys, you may oh, have been watching us chit chat for a while. Uh, <laughs> Just twiddling our thumbs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is all uh, new to us. D, I'll uh, hand it over to you, man. All right. This is a new thing we're doing, Wednesdays. Wednesday's Indie Comic Book Talk. We got Tyrone from Sovereign Comics hanging out with us. Britt from Indie Comic Dispatch, as you guys always know. And, uh, and me, D, of FTL Nerd Talk. I'm currently in uh, Instagram jail, like always. But uh, today we're going to talk about some cool comic books. We got Excellence we're going to talk about. We got uh, God Killer. And what comic did you bring, Tyrone? Well, I just finished, um, actually, I just finished a comic that I backed in Kickstarter. Oh, it's- it's actually a pretty good read. I like the uh, the way that that Taurus Comics did with uh, the Wizard of Oz lore. It just took it and kind of spent it a little bit. So, really good book. It was, it was really really good, really good. So, well, since you've already shown us a comic, why don't you start it out with oh, us talking about that? Yeah. And also, I want to say everybody, we got like a new member of FTO along with that uh, with Mayhammer. We got Tyrone joining us. What FTO? Uh, so, yeah. welcome aboard, man. Nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be part of the FTO family. So now I can flip tables over too. Damn right. Damn <laughs> if, right. If you didn't know, FTO stands for flipping tables flipping over. Table over. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I was like, perfect name. Perfect name. <laughs> it just fits. It just fits. It does. It does. <laughs> Doing that with the industry, just flipping tables. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, so Ruby from Planet Oz. Like I said, it pretty much took the, because um, you know, like a lot of people have had their liberties with, with the Wizard of Oz and the lore of that. You know, you have, uh, of course, you have, uh, what was it? The the um, wicked, you know? Yeah, wicked. Yeah, the play, right? Yeah, he had the the what was it? Nineteen eighties, I think. When Oz came out, well, when Michael Jackson anyway, he was oh, the, the Wiz, Wiz. The, the Wiz. Wiz, yeah, the Wiz. So you have that. Like everybody took their liberties with it, but with this book, it did something different. Like, well, the like, it, like, like, like the title. The time. title is the title is Ruby from Planet Oz. You know, okay. so okay. so it took Wizard of Oz and or Oz and put it on another planet, you know? So instead of it being, you know, uh, another dimension or um, another universe or whatever, it took it and put it on the planet. So now you have this planet, Oz, which is in, in the middle of a huge civil war almost because you have a, you had a Wicked Witch of the East and a Wicked Witch of the West, you know, sisters, like in, like in the regular story, you know, but they teamed up to take over the planet Oz, you know? So instead of the munchkins, you know, their they're, they're little people are called the... Um, the Ellings and stuff like that, and that's this race that you know that lives on that planet to include other individuals who who are part of that. So um, the part that I really dug about it because I was curious, I was like, well, how did Ruby, you know, because her, her name she goes by Ruby. Of course, her name her name is Dorothy Jean, but she goes by Ruby. And I was like, well, how did she get there? You know, like is, is she going to be is going to stick along with that whole um, from Earth? You know, she gets disembarked from earth and brought over and right. the author did that they kept that but they did it in a fascinating way like instead of her and, and what i liked in the art um actually i could probably show this because i do how want people to go i do want people to get this there? book uh, so right now it's just the first issue i'm pretty sure that I'm, if i'm not mistaken they do have another kickstarter coming soon for the second one but one of the things that i really enjoyed um because the, the author of this, he was also the artist um, for what I was gathering. But right here, you see her with her family and everything, and they're in the park, they're in Kansas. And then here, get the bright light shine on her. So you already know, if you're a sci-fi head, you already know what bright lights in the middle of a forest means. So, <laughs> Something big's so, about to show up. Yep. She's about to get abducted. <laughs> so that's pretty, much, that's pretty much what happens. Like, she gets abduct, abducted. But what they did, which I thought was really, really creative and cool, instead of having the light shine on her and pull her in, it's like the UFO vacuumed her up. So it created that tornado. The that tornado, nice. So well, you know. So I just paid a lot of nods to the old story, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. So I, I saw that and I was like, okay, I, I'm digging that. That was really cool. That was really creative. It was really outside you know, outside the box, I think. Because mm-hmm. he could have easily went with, oh, you know, bright light, pick him up. But he made the UFO like suck her into it. Another cool part that I like too, because she has this uh, companion with her, just like how Dorothy had Toto as a companion. But right. in the comic, Toto is an, a dog. Toto is this orb, you know, that is kind of almost like her her battle companion and her battle medic and stuff. Kind of like Skeet from Booster Gold, right? Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. exactly. That's what it put me in mind of. And I was like, okay, that's, that's really cool. I just like the different approaches. And another part that in the comic, it explained 
the characters. So you still have the Cowardly Lion, you still have Tin Man, you still have Scarecrow. Um, and as far as the, <laughs> the wizard, <laughs> oh, everybody's drinking, man. It's, like, it's after hours, man. <laughs> I might have to go get my flask. Now. <laughs> so, but um, but the, like I was saying, like the cool part, is it, it just got into um, how each character became this freedom fighter trying to fight to help the planet out. And I think the coolest one, I like all of their stories because he, he kept it the same with the wizard. The wizard is going to be a character from earth. Just kind like of neurotic, kind of like, crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Kind of awful. But the thing is, is like, he actually is leading the freedom, the freedom. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. so that's kind of cool too. So I was like, what do you, ah, what you think about the art? Did, did the art count complement the story? Or did it throw you off a little bit? The art, I think it did. Um, one thing, like with me being a creator myself, I am very, I'm not too judgmental on the art unless it's very bad. Yeah. <laughs> like it has to be very unless bad. like it's un- unlookable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like when you look at it, you just like, oh, can you know, I, I just, I just can't keep looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like with this one, it didn't do that to me. You know, it's a different artistic style, and that's one thing that I can that I love about the indie comic community. Mm-hmm. It's because you're going to have different styles of stories. You're going to have different styles of writers. You're going to have different art styles, you know. You're going to have some people who have books that are Marvel DC image level. And you're going to have some people that aren't. But I don't let the art t- detour me away from the story. If the story is amazing, I'm going to keep reading it. Unless yeah. it's to the point where I can't stomach the art because it's just... You know, it's, it's funny that you say that. I watched, I tried to watch uh, Hotel Artemis last night. I fell mm-hmm. asleep during it. Uh-huh. And uh, my wife asked, like, so what do you think about that movie? Because she didn't want to watch it. I said, mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't the best movie, but the acting was good. Like, yeah. I know I fell asleep, but the acting was good. I said, uh, mm-hmm. good acting can make a bad writing story bad, but yeah. good writing can make a bad acting story good. So, exactly. yeah, I get exactly. what you're saying. Yeah, man, we, we've all seen movies and stuff like that, but the art in it, I liked it. I liked it. Um, could have been better, I think, but it was still good. Right on. Um, and um, for me, and the reason why, another reason why for that too, because like my first book that I ever published was Arisha Exos issue one, which I, I I know Brett read that. He told me that he liked the title, but that first book, because I was, you know, even though I brought on the artist to pencil, I was under the impression that people wouldn't. You know, they'd be like, oh, well, you didn't make that comic because you didn't draw anything, you know, because that's kind of the whole weird yeah. mess. That's the thing. a lot of people. Yeah, 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 that's the thing. It's yeah. a thing. Wow. They're, like, they're like, oh, you didn't draw, so you didn't create it. And it's like, but I wrote what? it. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's not how creators should work. That's crazy. <laughs> and, yeah, and, it, and it's the weird part. Like, and, and I've gone through that. I've had people say that to me. And I'm like, you do realize that's how Marvel and DC and everybody that you look up to, that's how they work. So everybody. They, 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 they follow the Bill Bob Kane philosophy, apparently, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah. yeah I guess, like, yeah, since, they, since Bob Kane wrote it, Bill Finger didn't do shit. Got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, you know? So Whatever, like, man. <laughs> so, so, like, with that first comment, like, I was like, you know, I was already inking and stuff like that, so I inked it. All right. And then I decided to color it, and I sucked at coloring. So when I looked at it, I was like, I'm never doing this again. I was like, I'm only <laughs> inking. I'm never coloring again. I'm still writing, <laughs> character concepts, inks. That's it. I'm never coloring. You know, I get that because you, you you present yourself like a professionist and feel like yeah. if, if you try to do coloring, you like spend a lot of your time trying to get that done well, yeah. Yeah. the best yeah. you could, and you spend all your time trying to do that yeah. instead of doing everything else you need to do a part of that craft. So yeah, exactly. I get that completely. Exactly. You know, so and like from it I'm is sorry, it man. is your worst cover. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. It's the worst <laughs> cover. And I drew that cover. Like, I was like, I look at it now and I'm just like I want to redraw this. See, this is he, he'd be the one to wanted to play like it is. I, I, I'll still keep pussy putting around it. But yeah. no, cause, honestly, because like if anybody were to look at a Risha Exos issue one, it was like, oh man, that cover is so dope. Like I would look at him like you're lying oh, to me. Really? You're lying to my face. <laughs> I don't even like <laughs> The story for anybody out there watching is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. The cover is shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the cover is freaking horrible. The story is great. It's going to bring you into the unit. You're going to learn about, you know, the mechs and everything mm-hmm. like that. It, it really, and, and the cool part with that, I have two individuals like in my ear, Thomas Johnson and Damone. Who, and Thomas is the one who creates all my, who created all my mechs. And Damone was the one who uh, pretty much was the penciler on that book. And I'm like, hey, let me ink and color. And he was like, all right, whatever. So issue two, I was like, dude, you got it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it was, nice, it was nice working with you, buddy. Yeah, I, was like, I was like, you got it. I was like, I was like, I'll stay in my lane. I'm just gonna write. Right like, on, right on. Good idea. So, I was, I was God so, killers, man. 
God Killers was, and, um, you know, underwhelming. <laughs> now I just read issue one. I just read issue one. I did. Oh, me too. Like, uh, no, please keep going. It has potential. But what I, so Mark Sable wrote it and I, I know nothing about Mark Sable other than what I was able to Google about him. And he looks like a white guy and he's writing about a Muslim atheist. And they bring that point up over and over and over again. It's, Muslim it's like kind of rammed down your throat in the it first is, page. Yeah. Isn't it? And it's like, who, I mean, obviously that's going to be important to the story, but do they think we're idiots and we don't remember the one time they mentioned it? I don't know. It's like I, I, seriously, like in the beginning panel, like they have like a bunch of text talking about like his upbringing yeah. as being a Muslim person, and then like you know he's talking to somebody else while he's in the military about him being Muslim. Also, then he goes back to thinking about him being Muslim. It's like we got it, we, we got, got it, we got it, we get it. It's like it's like it's like the two worst bad people for for evangelical Christians out there: a Muslim and an atheist. I'm like, dude, man. <laughs> it's, it's funny that you mentioned that though. How how you said uh. He just keeps repeating that, repeating that. Because that was one of the things that I was told by someone as I was writing. They were like, they pretty much told me, they were like, don't be a pretentious asshole when you write. There's, there's and I was no just like, they were like, when you tell them something, they were like, your, your, your fans, your readers, they're smart. They're going to remember you. Because they're reading. Yeah, trust repeating. that they can remember. Yeah. 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 So but I don't know. Know. It, it had potential. Like it had, like, yeah. it had like, you know, it seemed like it was going somewhere. It just yeah. in that first issue, if, uh, if it wasn't given to me, I wouldn't mm -hmm. keep reading the next comic books. I'm just gonna be I'm gonna be flat out honest. No. If it wasn't given to me, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have kept reading it. No, yeah, exactly. I, I got issues two and three. I'm gonna give it a chance after this and see yeah. what happens. But the artwork is great. The artwork, the artwork is, is great. Yeah. Yeah, the artwork is great. I, I'm I, I love the artwork. And I think what I tell you, it was like a, a G.I. Joe meets Hellboy concept. Yes. Is, yeah, and, and it has that feel to it too. It yeah. does. It does. But just I mean I don't know, Mark. I don't know what else Mark Sable has written, um, but uh, I don't know. yeah, like his first issue, like not a good intro. If it was a pilot TV show, it would not have got greenlit. No, it's, I did um, not pick as oh, good yeah. of books as you two did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? Uh, the, one, the one I the one I picked out was uh one, one drawn by Kara Rudolph. Ex I forget the writer's name. Uh, Excellence. You probably Excellence, heard of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think. Have you read Excellence? Yeah, I've heard of excellence. Um, Brandon, Brandon Thomas is the yeah, writer. Brandon Thomas. Yeah, he's yes. a good writer, and he's a, he's uh, an amazing. That dude's an amazing writer. <laughs> Grand Grandmaster uh, Fox as uh, talks about it a lot, and like that what got me like sparked something. Like I should check out this comic book. He's always he's always talking about this comic book. I should just go check it out. And I read it, and dude, that first issue, like I didn't. I got like the graphic novel, so I didn't realize like you know I'm reading like the second or third issue. But I just, I just kept on turning that page, man. I just kept on going. Like this is, it's good. Yeah. It's like a, it's like Harry Potter yes, meets yes. like some Lord of the Rings type <laughs> shit. Yes. Makes yes. like with like some futuristic, Afrofuturistic type story to it, yep. with uh, so many undertones of like a black culture, mm -hmm. of black and white interactions, of mm -hmm. like black and white dad and son like, relationship. Yeah, I mean, it's dude, just like just so, so many much. layers into it. So yeah. many things. Like I, I've told people, I'm like, if you, if you. Look at yourself, and if you're a black person, you say, I wish I can go to Hogwarts. Pick up excellence. <laughs> yes. Pick up excellence. <laughs> and, like it, like, it just kept, like, touching on things. I touched, like, on, on, on black on black relationships, like, like a, yeah. the diaspora of, like, wealthy black and, like, poor black. Yeah. And, like, yeah. it would, uh, would like, to touch, like, the, the black and white savior complex. I was like, like damn, yeah. you guys are hitting all these <laughs> damn buttons, and they're just killing it. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I, I, loved, I loved every bit of it. Uh, definitely check it out if you haven't checked it out. Like it's like one of the best comic books I've read in a long time, and this is coming from like a hardcore DC guy, <laughs> a hard a hardcore big two dude. Like I don't like reading like indie comic books. Like I'm just gonna, I know. What? Like both both of you guys are big. I know you guys are both big indie dudes. I know. I'm a hardcore Marvel and DC man, but like uh, like I love that story. I loved it. Like if it, it's if, really good. It's really. Yeah. I, I read it after you told me you were reading it, and the artwork. I mean. God, There's so yes. much going on there. It is really good. It touched on like on like like not the black culture, like with the barbershop, like with the, mm -hmm. the the legacy of handing out something from father to son, like you were talking about before. Yeah. It 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 rolls that so well inside of itself. Like like you wouldn't notice it if you weren't a part of that culture, but like since you are a part of that culture, it yeah. it screams it like like damn, he hit this well and like it rings through. It's so good. Yeah.
I'm gushing. Oh, Sorry, I'm gushing. Yeah. Oh, no. It's, <laughs> it's a good book. It really is. It's so it good. Is. And you said, Tyrone, I think before we were on, you said you'd met the author before or the creator? What? Yes. Yeah, I met the author at MechaCon um, in Detroit. It was back in 2016. We actually hung out for a bit. His table was right beside mine. So cool, dude. <laughs> back so in the good old days, days when there were cool conventions. Yeah. Before oh, Corona man. Virus. Before 2020 when they kept the world. <laughs> right? <laughs> So, the Defa Convention yeah. 2020, yeah. 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 yeah, he was actually one that gave me a lot of um, writing notes and stuff like that because after I did the first Arisha X, like I said, and, and then, like, my books are beautifully printed now. Then it was horrible. I had this big <laughs> black border going on. It was so bad. Like, um, hey, <laughs> Brett, I might have to send you. I can't my, imagine I, that. <laughs> I might have to send you that and just let yeah. you see it. You're going to be like, oh, wow, you came along. <laughs> I, I will say one thing about Solver Convo is like I told you this before, like I do wish you guys had some capes. If and if not capes, <laughs> some dusters. Like, dusters. like give, give me give me some dusters, dude. That's all that's all I ask for. Something all I think of when you say wind. dusters is my middle school daughter wearing her duster to school. That's all she wanted for Christmas twenty nineteen was like a pretty badass kid if you ask me. <laughs> 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 the, the funny part is though, uh, what you were saying, capes like uh, Rainus, the the leader of Cipher Team, the the black guy with the dreads, he actually had a trench coat initially. His original design, he had his long dusted trench coat type deal and his uniform under it. But I took that away from him because mm. there's, there, there's, <laughs> there's there's <laughs> major there, there's major plans for him in the in the future. So he might be picking that coat up. So okay. Oh. I want to keep. I'm going to keep hyping it up until you do it. So you know, there's there's that too. So. I will. I will make one for you. I will make a character just for you. I'm like, look, I have a cape. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. This is this is what, what I want. Name name him after me too. I'll take that bearded well. guy in the I got corner you. with the beanie on. There you go. Look at you. You're thinking, dude. In, in social, social media jail. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to make him an antagonist or at least an anti-hero by all means i'm all for it i got you i got you i'll do it i'll do it because i was looking at it too and i thought it was so funny when you brought it to me like when i put the uh that post up and i was i think i, I was asking uh ask people to ask me questions or yeah and you were like where are the capes i just thought it was hilarious because i was like man he's like one of the only people that actually saw it i think i know i think brett mentioned it before to me too but i'm like yeah no he one notices. else has noticed that I none of my characters have none of them have capes. <laughs> he notices all those little details. I'm uh yeah. Yeah. I'm not yeah. I'm not even gonna try to fight it. I'm that guy. I'm really am. Hey, um, but like back back when I read Excellence, I, I gave him so many notes about it. like it was almost like like why should we do an interview about the story <laughs> since you've already told me everything about it? Like, so yeah. yeah, there you go. Why should I buy this book? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> then you bought it and you were like, okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. I get bored easy, man. I understand that. <laughs> I understand that. I understand that. I, I kind of get like that, like writing. I kind of get like that with some movies and stuff, like some comics. That's the reason why I like when, when, like for instance, when I was talking about uh, Ruby from the Planet Oz. Yeah, it did different things to where because like I was reading, I'm like, okay, okay, I see you. You're going to the Oz beat. And then I'm like, oh, they're going to do this next. And then it doesn't. I'm like, oh, okay. God, you kept my attention. You know, and as a writer, I look at stuff like that too. Like if I start seeing beats and if you keep going that beat, I'm just like, okay, I'm going to put you away. Like I want a twist. <laughs> Did you know? yeah. want like, like more edge or like what's the tone to it nice inside that story? Was there like, like a nice like a PG, had, PG-13 style it to it? It had a mixture between both because like I even like how they did the flying monkeys, you know, instead of making them these little spider monkeys or these little chimpanzees, they they're apes, you know, they're huge. So they're intimidating rocket, as hell. Yeah, exactly, you know, wow. rocket packs and everything like that. They actually can speak, you know, and stuff like that. And Ruby puts a bullet through one of their heads. <laughs> you know, like, I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> like, I was not expecting that. She was just All like, right you know, the, like uh, one of the apes blew up, uh, blew up her transport. And she survived it. And the ape's like, oh, oh, wow, she's alive. And she's like, you shouldn't have did that. You just made me mad and just shot him in the head. I'm like, okay, there we go. I'm on board. Like, Let's go. Like, uh, I'm watching Deep Space Nine right now. I'm thinking about like, like the Jim Hadaw when you, when you say that. Yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, the yeah, first yeah. thing that pops in my head are those yeah. things. That's a good it's, series. I it's, love it's Deep cool Space that Nine. you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I just, this, course, this is my course. first time watching Deep Space Nine ever. No. Really? I'm not kidding you. First I'm about to rewatch it, honestly. I'm definitely yeah. watching it. If I didn't I gotta, have I seven finish. kids, I'd rewatch it. <laughs> <laughs> what you, what you, 
<laughs> just give them uh, popcorn. They'll be like, look. Just give them popcorn. Like, We're learning <laughs> history. <laughs> yep. Yeah, right? <laughs> I try to show my kids Doctor Who. They did not care for it. They did not yeah. care for Doctor Who. I, Doctor I, Who is definitely a acquired taste, I think. Yeah, I don't. Taste. I never got into Doctor Who. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because wow. some episodes I can watch, and I'm like, oh, man, this is so cool. And then some episodes, I'm like, ah, oh, nope. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh, with that companion? Yeah. I'll be yeah. <laughs> 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 that's, that's usually how I do like, oh yeah, that companion with you. Like I'm gonna take out take out this episode. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. It's like the companion makes or break the doctor in my in my personal opinion. True. True. Yeah. True. But uh any other any other comments you guys looking for in the future? Like anything like you guys want to talk about next week? Because oh, we're gonna make this a weekly thing, right? It's gonna yeah. be a weekly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's weekly. Gonna be a weekly get together. All right. Enjoy this. Next time I'm gonna bring my drink because I forgot this. Time. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> believe me. Yeah. They're gonna be switching it up every single episode, but absolutely yeah. I'm not. <laughs> I'm almost whiskey. Bald. Yeah. Whiskey. Yep, see, and that's whiskey. what and that's I'm what I have in my class. I have whiskey. I'm a vodka, dude. Yeah. I'm a vodka. Very yeah. I love <laughs> God. Straight vodka, dear gods, yes. <laughs> I don't have any demons, I promise. Yeah. Oh man. What's um, coming down the line? Um, you know, I'm reading, we're going to interview him soon on the dispatch. Um, the um, Electromagnetic Press, they did a couple anthology series um, called Miscellanea. I posted about a couple days. They have some really good stories in there. Really? Yeah. You have to get that. Yeah. Have to get what that. was the comic you read uh, You read earlier today? Like, you had a comic book you posted earlier this morning. I uh, forget what the name of it was. The, yeah, that that, this morning was Miscellanea, volume two. Is that the one? Okay, yeah. That's With what that I thought. cool cover? I mean, that cover is like awesome. Like a ghostly, spooky kind yeah, of cover to it? Yeah. 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 Volume one, the second story in volume one is about cicadas. And I don't know if you guys know, but we're in a hatch year for cicadas. Um, uh, I have family in Tennessee, and it's a big thing right now. And um, so uh, volume one, the second story in, in the anthology is about cicadas. It is the best story so far <laughs> in right both on. volumes. I'm not nice. going to give anything away, but it's, it's nice. really good. So is it like horror base or horror base anthology? It's both. Or is it just like more? you go from okay. from kind of like horror base to like goofy superheroes. The next story. I mean, it's oh, just nice. yeah, so it's, it's got something for everybody. It's really is it a, a true anthology. Then, pretty yeah. Is it is it a, is it a, um, is it a straight superhero story when it goes to that, or is it more like a deconstruct superhero story? No, straight straight wow. super. Yeah. So it just kind of goes around short story to short story. Some in prose, some in comic book format. It's it's really good. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm yeah, gonna have to check that out. I think uh, me personally, I'm still reading Rebirth. I think you guys both know that I, I'm, I'm DC guy. I don't, yeah, I don't care. Whatever. I like, I like DC. Like that's what I'm reading. Until until things happen in Marvel, like I will not read Marvel. But like DC, all over this Rebirth. I think I'm. Um, where am I in DC right now? It's not Superman. It's not Batman. I think I'm in Justice League with Scott. Oh, God, God, Scott Snyder. God. I loved that story until Scott's last issue on Dude. it. Dude, I'm not going to give it away. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, just, it's not that it's not that good. It gets better. Like he's slow at spots. It gets better, and then right when it's getting good, just light a dumpster fire and throw it all away. Like it's just. I'm uh, at the part where uh, they just went to the alternate universe. Like, no, they went to the future where uh -huh. Hawkman and Marshman Hunter had a kid. Yep. And uh, <laughs> Superman's old with a white suit. Batman's yeah. like, you know, got a red, red and black suit on. It just, like, it finally started getting interesting at that point. But all yeah. of it before that is nothing but info dump. Info no, dump. Yeah. Info yeah. dump. Info dump. That's, that's when it gets good, is right there. And then, uh, have, you, have you read that, Tyrone? I seen it. Have not okay. picked it up because okay. um, I was actually you're not reading. missing anything. Am no. I not? <laughs> you're really you're not. not. You're, not <laughs> you're not missing anything. You're really like I was. Like... That was because that was the last. That was the last stronghold for me because I was reading. I stopped reading Marvel comics. Probably around the time y'all probably stopped reading Marvel. Comics. I stopped reading them in 1996. 2016. Good. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. I stopped I'm reading. Sorry, around, I stopped reading one like late 2016, like, around November. Yeah. Just if, if you guys put the numbers together, <laughs> that's when I stopped reading. So yeah. But, yeah. Like I, I haven't, I haven't really picked them up. Um, I think the last Marvel comic I picked up was whenever the Fantastic Four came back and they did the whole. Oh yeah. Thing. So I picked up that because I wanted that book. That didn't piss and you off though. That didn't say like it, as fan service. It did. It was, and it, it did. Was like, so I just, what? I just picked it up to have it, so I could say, "Hey, I have. Maybe it'd be worth some. I don't. It probably won't be worth anything." That pissed me off so much. <laughs> so we're gonna get rid of the Fantastic Four, yeah. like just because Fox owns like the rights yeah. to the uh -huh. movies. Are you yeah. serious? Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like I thought that was so dumb. I so thought when they did that movie, that was so dumb. So Do you dumb. know? And then the crazy part, I think they only really brought them back 
because one book I was on in DC with part of their rebirth, which I think they canceled it. I hope they didn't, but it was um, the Terrifics. Oh, no, oh yeah, still, that's, that's still going. I'm pretty sure. I'm, uh, that, it's, that book is really it's, fun. It's ending. Is it's it ending? Uh, yeah, they uh, they only they only so re- they released like four or three more issues in digital only. Digital. Oh only. wow. Yeah, wow. it's ending. Well, it's I mean, good, DC though. is like this it far is. from bankruptcy Super. right now, so. Sadly. Yeah. Um, I think that's the reason why they're deciding to bring the Snyder Cut in. Yeah, and like, I think so. Oh, yeah, they need some please, money. Please get the fans money. Like, <laughs> if, they, if they stop listening to the New Fifty Two fans, they'd be exactly. good to go, man. Yeah. Um, Jeez. so I don't even know what that meant. Um, Scott Snyder, Undiscovered Country. Have you have either of you read that? It's his image title. Right now. I only image cut I read of his was uh was it was it North and South or East and West that he did? Was that the title know. that he had with the vampire story? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't yeah. remember the title, but I do remember him doing a vampire story. I, I read that and I really like the the spin-offs of that and again, just a lot of info dump. And yeah. like in like the first three issues, like dude, I I just I'm can't the, Undiscovered like Country story. starts to balance that where your your stuff's happening. But there's still info dump. I mean, but he does the info dump in a more creative way for undiscovered okay. country. It's like the the United States has been sealed off for like 60 years from the rest of the world, and all of a wow. sudden there's a distress call for them to for people outside the country to come in for the first time. And it's it's like Mad Max meets I don't even know what, but it, it's pretty yeah. it's pretty cool. So like, like a culture yet. shock, pretty much. Yeah, huh? yeah. Right on. That sounds interesting. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw it when it was coming out, and it was kind of a big thing. Because I think one of the first covers wasn't it like they, like America was like blanked out or something like that. Yeah. On the first cover. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's I, I, that's kind of cool. Yeah. You know, but so I never if, got if I'm reading it. this, what would be like? What would be like the, like say I'm reading this, like I, I think like you know it's boring in the first issue. When does it really start to kick off? Like that, I should keep reading this. The last issue that came out, maybe number six. Did number six just come out? Um, that's where I feel it really starts to get good. But I have to read the other issues like to get one. You kind of do, issue. yeah, Man, yeah, you I'll do. Figure. There's I'll, action I'll in it. Shot. There's there's the info dump, but there's still action in it. I think I think right. that's why I think that's why he uh, does that because in a sense, like um, to keep you reading, like Dragon yeah, Ball Z style, reading, like, like, yeah, like yeah. you have to start yeah. from one, and like and I kind of do that with my books too, yeah. but I don't. I, I try not to bore people with the info because yeah. like because like in the Yamal Sleep One issue one, I kind of felt like I was boring people a little bit, so I was like, okay, let's get some action. So I was like chopping yeah. back and forth, yeah. but. I know, I know, I know the best recipe for that, and like you know, you guys gotta get on a laugh. I'll tell you where I got it from. Watching these uh, these NBC shows, like the Chicago PD, like Chicago Fire, things like that. Mm-hmm. The best way, like to to move that info dump, but like mm-hmm. not get people like bored is put bit characters who are doing stupid shit, and like and see what they do, <laughs> then take it back to like the serious stuff where the info is. Like that's yeah. honestly, like, like that's the best way to like to balance that stuff out. It's like the show. Yeah. Two big characters that you can fall in love with, but just doing the most dumbest thing possible, yeah. then take it back to the seriousness. And that's they, why don't, I, they don't do that very well. So that's why I love um, this. I think out of out of two books, Yamasu. Because like I said, I felt like in Yamasu, my issue one was kind of info dumpish. <laughs> you had to get used Easy to the word. world. Cipher Team issue one Sorry. was especially info dump, info dumpish. Um, but a Yama Sigmata issue too. That's why I like it so much. I started introducing the other characters. So Gert is probably one of my favorites because he's always doing something dumb. <laughs> you know, in the background. <laughs> like he's, like he's just there always. He just wants because he, he's a, uh, you know, when they started getting their powers, he was able to run fast. So he always wants to move. So he's always doing something dumb. And I, see got, Dan- um, I see Daniel's watching. He agrees also with the thing that we're saying as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like you do, you do have to do that. So like you don't bore people. And that was something that I learned. Like writing for comics is totally different. I started off writing short stories and scripts. So like like movie scripts and stuff mm. like that. So going to comic is like you gotta try to get as much as you can in those pages that you allot. And that's the reason why I kind of for me I took the um I was like, I'm not doing I'm not worrying about twenty four pages. I'm like if it comes out and this issue is fifty pages, it's fifty pages. So I'm just gonna stop when it's done. I, I will say this though, like I don't mind the info. I don't mind seeing the no. info. I don't mind yeah. having info. It just it's all about how you execute it mm-hmm. towards me as a problem. Exactly. That's, right. that's right. what matters the most to me. It's like it's how you give me that information. Yep. So as long as it's not a bullet list and people just Dude, sit yeah. Table, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, re- ate- I'm reading a comic, not a novel, dude. <laughs> like, I ate a sandwich today. What kind of sandwich did you eat? It was a pepperoni sandwich. Pepperoni, that's odd. <laughs> 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 just go, like, 
<laughs> give give me the give me the, the, the Stephanie Collins version of uh, Info Dump. Don't give me don't give me the George R. R. Martin version of Info Dump. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I don't even like know every detail of the character yeah, like clothing yeah. that they're wearing. I don't need that. <laughs> hey guys, we got about uh, two, two minutes, minutes thirty yeah. seconds left because I have a free Zoom account, not a pro one. No worries. This is this has been fun. Dog. We it's definitely should do this again. Oh, yeah, uh, definitely, definitely have to do this. Again. I don't know what comic I'll do, but I'll, if whenever I get out of jail, I'll post that comic book. That I'll be we'll be talking about next week. I hope <laughs> you guys do the same thing in your account. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Tyrone has a new account. It's mm -hmm. uh, FTO Indie Comic Billboard, where he's gonna be talking mm -hmm. about all the top comic books of the week. Uh, mm -hmm. It's gonna be a little bit different than Brett's because Brett has his own personal style to it. Yeah. You see, like his yeah. background there, like that's all. That's, <laughs> that's all, all him. So, yeah. so we we'll try to bring something different and not. He's gonna be shooting off fireworks in the background. Yeah. Like exactly. All stuff <laughs> <laughs> Today's comic, you know, get all amped up. <laughs> but we we'll try to break it down into genres too. That's one thing I do want to do, like horror. I stuff. love that. I like uh, that. Family, you know, well, family I'm, stuff. But yeah. I'm D with FTO Nerd Talk. Brett, Indie Comics Dispatch. And Ty, Sovereign Comics, and FTO Billboard. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, guys. See you guys next week. See ya.